Welcome, everyone. I'd like to uh, open the webinar, Educating Human Rights Activists to Understand Taijiman Case, co-organized by Cessnur and Human Rights Without Frontiers on January 28th, after the International Day of Education. Um, every day, on uh, every year on January 24, there is a celebration of International Day of Education as proclaimed by the United Nations of General Assembly. Around the world, the access to high quality education varies and millions of people continue to be denied of these fundamental human rights. The purpose of the day is to advocate for improvement, educational reforms and expanded educational opportunities for everybody. It's a day to rejoice and promote educational, educational access. In the con context of the Taijiman, we can see relationships of the movement and the education in various aspects, but two of them seems most important. The focus on the Taijiman's teaching and views on education, especially about world peace, um, and uh, the one that is reflected in today's meeting title, that is educating about Taijiman case to help solving it and to prevent similar occurrences uh, to happen. Um, education is one of those rare things that cannot be taken away from anybody. When one's learned some, something, it stays there, even if freedom is limited or human rights are violated. Um, uh, what is more, almost all United Nations documents on peace emphasize that there can be no peace without peace education. We are continuously reminded by Taiji Men and its Shifu, Grandmaster Dr. Hong Tao Tse, that love and conscience are related to peace. Love is another word that is used too often, uh, and the idea uh, of connecting with peace may be reviewed, uh, received with skepticism uh, by many. Taiji Men frequently stressed love and conscience as cornerstones of international peace, nevertheless. Love without conscience may indeed be empty word. Love with conscience is demanding concept. It includes self, selfless, uh, self, self, selfishness, arrogance, and manipulating of others. Um, and it can't create true peace. Uh, as a consequence, Dr. Hong teaches, peace education should be based on conscience education. During a virtual event of the International Day of Education uh, last year uh, ago, uh, Dr. Hong, Hong explained that the core value of education lies in the inspiring people's conscience and self-awareness, uh, thereby shaping individual and the landscape of the future society. Uh, the most important education for everyone from birth to death is conscience education. Uh, he added that conscience is a constant reminder for people to restore their true hearts, do the right thing and make wise decisions. Everyone is an important educator of, uh, educator of conscience. Everyone should respect, tolerate, understand, forgive, appreciate, learn from, and care for another. Uh, each kind thought and uh, each good deed can have a critical influence on global citizens' well-being, according to Dr. Hong. The second reason why is it appropriate to hold one of our events in connection with the International Day of Education in, is uh, the Taijiman case itself. The title of uh, our webinar today is Educating Human Rights Activists to Understand the Taiji Man Case. This requires some explanations as dozens of the seminars have already been organized and many in the international human rights and freedom of religion or belief community are now aware of the Taiji Man Case. The Taiji Man Case hasn't been solved yet though, so clearly more action is required. An international movement was created in the last few years that took the Taiji Man Case to international media, magazines, scholarly journals, academic conferences and the United Nations themselves. One positive effect of this movement is that numerous researchers and activists from human, for human rights from around the world are now aware of Taiji Man case and its teachings about, about peace, love and conscience. Um, and it's not an exaggeration to say that the true community has been created with a new awareness of the relationships between conscience, justice and peace, and even now a few new friendships. However, we need to reach more politicians and opinion leaders certainly in Taiwan, but internationally as well, as perhaps only the internationalization of the case may offer hopes to solve it. We need to elaborate a simple, clear, and persuasive discourse explaining that the Taiji Man case is all about, what it's all about. And we certainly need to involve even more scholars, activists, journals, friends through the world. Education opens doors for a change, and change is very much needed for the freedom of the conscience around the world. Uh, Taiji Man plays a crucial role in educating the world to peace, love and conscience. It's time to educate the world about the injustice vested on it that lasts over 26 years. Um, let me now uh, introduce the video. 
education is a fundamental human right. It's the bedrock of societies, economies, and every person's potential. But without adequate investment, this potential will wither on the vine. It has always been shocking to me that education has been given such a low priority in many government policies and in international cooperation instruments. The theme of this year's International Day of Education reminds us that to invest in people prioritize education. Investment is critical to achieving Sustainable Development Goal 4. Last year's Transforming Education Summit gathered the world together to reimagine education systems so every learner accesses the knowledge and skills required to succeed. Over 130 countries made commitments to ensure that universal quality education becomes a central pillar of public policies and investments. A call to action on educational investment and the establishment of international financing facility for education created a fresh push on domestic and international financing. And the summit launched a range of global initiatives to mobilize support for education in crisis settings, girls' education, founda foundational learning, transforming teaching, digital tools and green education systems. Now is the time for all countries to translate their summit commitments into concrete actions that create supportive and inclusive learning environments for all students. Now is also the time to end all discriminatory laws and practices that hinder access to education. I call on the de facto authorities in Afghanistan, in particular, to reverse the outrageous and self-defeating ban on access to secondary and higher education for girls. And I also encourage countries to place education at the art of preparations for the SDG Summit in 2023 and the Summit of the Future in 2024. Most of all, I urge civil society and youth to continue calling for more and better investment in quality education. Let's keep the flame of transformation burning. Let's deliver education systems that can support equal societies, dynamic economies and the limitless dreams of every learner in the world. Yes. Thank you very much. I would like to now introduce uh, first of the from the uh, first speaker from the groups of scholars. Uh, it is Mr. Michele Olzi, PhD. Uh, he is a teaching assistant in the course of religion and media and temporary researcher fellow in political theory University of Insurbia in Italy. I would like now to give floor to Michele. Please. Thank you very much, Carolina. Can you hear me? Yes, Perfect. we can hear Thank you. Well. you. I would like to join Carolina in thanking uh, Chesnor and uh, Human Rights Without Frontiers for making this webinar today possible. And in order to stress the value, the political, religious value of education all over the world. And so my the title of my paper should be For Whom the Bell Tolls, paraphrasing uh, a quite famous novel by Hemingway. And this is why political, religious, and social fields are characterized throughout the whole course of modernity by a central peculiar element, collective imageries. According to French scholar Jean-Jacques Binambourget, the imaginary is a multi-layer object whose nature is upway between real and virtual, spiritual and objectual. Thus, it can be said that collect collective imageries might represent a peculiar expression of the community. Feelings, expectations, concepts, values, ideas are represented therein. According also to political theorist Claudio Bonvecchio, open quote, humankind, independently from its socio-cultural level, uses symbols to process feelings, consciousness, and knowledge for the sake of a single individual and those around him, end of quote. Thus, collective imageries tend to mostly reflect and represent three social, exclusive, crucial elements, feelings, expectations, and consciousness. All these elements 
imply a social symbolical dynamic whose impact on the community is remarkable. The emergence of feelings related to social dynamics or expectations for the future or the, indi in the, the individual collective consciousness of a population towards changes and the constitution of the community itself are all crucial factors. Every possible form of representation of such elements is not relevant on a symbolic level only. The collective imagery per se has a strong impact on social level. More precisely, the way symbols and images are ordered, coordinated, and represented into a community also shapes the letter. According to Canadian, to Can Canadian philosopher Marsha McLuhan, media shape and control, open quote, the scale and form of human association and action. In other words, if the media exert an influence on the production of significant images, symbols, and the whole world of representations, then we can say that their impact on the community is undoubtedly strong. Therefore, some symbols and images and the narratives they associated with, them, of course, have a specific influence on the community. In particular, the religious, spiritual, and political spheres of the society are also involved in their relationship with this world of representations. Some elements of the cultural heritage, like monuments, statues, busts, uh, artworks, artifacts in general, as well as uh, cultural representations like novels, movies, comics, and so on and so forth, play an eminent role in political, religious, and spiritual life of a community. A symbol around which powerful political, religious, religious representations revolve is the bell. There are several examples of iconic bell all over the world. It is possible to include the, the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia, uh, which is a powerful symbol uh, of, uh, for the Amer of American independence. The church, bells of, the church bells of Norwich Cathedral in Norfolk, UK, which do not normally ring because both of religious and historical motivations, as well as the world largest medieval bell, Maria Gloriosa, uh, which is located in the higher tower of Erfurt Cathedral in Germany. These examples uh, imply peculiar situations that are both political and religious, with special reference uh, to 18th century politics in England, British scholar William Talet affirms, open quote, ringing and listening to church bells were part of a series of practices of feeling that mobilized, communicated, and regulated the political emotions, end of quote. Uh, although this passage refers to a very specific context where uh, religious and political parties competed for the use of bells, it is worth to stress the symbolical value of these cultural artifacts, it is the bells. The ring of a bell appears to the emotional and imaginative part of human being. In addition to the, to the examples I offered, other kinds of bells were casted and donated for reasons that transcend religion and politics. The reference is to both the Japanese peace bell uh, located in a Japanese garden in, um, of the United Nations quarters in New York City, and uh, the other reference is to the Bell of World Peace and Love, designed by the Grand Master of Taji Men, Dr. Hong, Hong Tao Tse, uh, which first uh, rang in Singapore in 2000, if I do remember correctly. The Japanese Peace Bell is representative of the post-war era initiatives. Rather, the Taji Men Bell of World Peace and Love is quite emblematic of the social symbolic situation of today's society. In traditional, in traditional Chinese culture, we know that the ring of the bell has both a secular and a spiritual meaning. The Tajimen movement 
through its doctrine, practices, and spiritual vision, has empowered and further developed the symbolic value of a bell in the collecting measuring of our globalized society, more specifically, the heart of Taiji Man's spiritual worldview is that the original purity of a human beings, which is of course, as already been said, rooted in conscience, has been lost. In order to rectify this loss, Taiji Man's disciples are taught a series of self-cultivation, Qi Qigong, I beg your pardon for my pronunciation, Kung Fu techniques to mobilize the positive energies of the universe and return to the conscience. The idea that physical exercises also have an, effect, an, an effective impact on the spiritual and mental dimensions is associated to the spiritual connotation of ringing the bell of war, peace, and love. To fully understand how this symbolism of the, of the bell has been presented during several public international manifestations where the two world touring bells of the world and peace and love were run by international leaders from, from all over the world. It is, necessary, it is as necessary to consider, to examine, and that another crucial aspect of Taiji, Man do, Taiji, Taiji Man's doctrine, I beg your pardon. The key word to assess the spiritual worldview of Taiji Man is conscience, once again. By quoting Dr. Hong, Open, or open quote. Conscience is the goodness in human nature, which through education and self-awareness can stop evil and spread goodness to benefit our society, country, and the world. When conscience is awakened in our, in our hearts and balance is restored, peace will not be far away. End of quote. According, according to Dr. Hong, Conscience is not only the core of Taiji Man's worldview, it is also essential for any possible sustainable scenario of the globalized world. However, conscience should not act as a moral compass, should, I beg your pardon, should act as a moral compass in order to guide the true values of the, city that, of the citizens of the world, namely, culture and education. According to Dr. Ong, open quote, culture is like the DNA in genetics. Truthfulness, kindness, and beauty, end of quote, help individuals to preserve anything they receive through family education, schooling, associate education, and lifelong learning, and endemically more this value, this heritage, into something entirely inclusive, adaptive, and positive. The education of conscience is therefore crucial to the formation of global citizens. Self-cultivation of the world vision of a young generation should abide by the tenets of love and peace, as well as by those of harmony and respect. A few days after the International Day of Education has been mentioned before, it is possible to acknowledge herein, along with Dr. Hong, the core values of quality education that all world citizens must receive. In a shape of a triangle, by placing conscience at the apex on the top and culture and education at the base, a societal spiritual model for a possible fertile world is established. Collective measures however, cannot be never taken for granted. They are damaged and impoverished by injustice as it happened in Taiwan with the Taiji Man case. Therefore, the bell of war, peace and love is an artifact that transcends the impoverishment of a political, a, a political religious, spiritual forces in a contemporary world. More specifically, it is the hope that tells us today that this damaged imagery, where the Taiji Man movement is persecuted, may be rectified. And I would like to conclude with a quote, a quote from a French political scientist, Raymond Aron, 
which uh, I find quite congenial to with the Taiji man's spirit and teachings on uh, education and peace. Open quote. If the sense of rivalry prevails, war becomes inexpiable and civilized diplomacy is eclipsed. If the sense of community, if the sense of a community of culture prevails, the temptation of state unification or of organized peace becomes irresistible. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Michele Olzi. Thank you again for your for your presentation. Now we'd like to now introduce um, uh, introduce the um, uh, Professor Massimo Introvigne, who is the founder uh, of the Center for Studies of New Religions, Chesnur, editor in chief uh, of Bitter Winter magazine. So I'm giving now floor to Professor Introvigne. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Carolina, and. Uh... I would like to remind those who are patiently following our webinars that last year on the eve of Human Solidarity Day 2022, I discussed how one of the pioneers of modern sociology, Emile Durkheim, founded the sociology of solidarity through his doctoral dissertation called the Division of Labor in Society. Now we have this webinar after the International Day of Education, and it's perhaps fit to mention that uh, Durkheim also founded the sociology of uh, education, but here the story is slightly more complicated because uh, Durkheim uh, taught a course on the sociology of education, indeed the first in the world, to those uh, who wanted to become a high school professors uh, of philosophy in France in the year 1904-1905 in Paris. However, he never published his text, and only more than 30 years later, 21 years after Durkheim's death was the course published, thanks to his widow, under the title L'Evolution Pédagogique en France, or the Evolution of uh, Pedagogy in uh, France. While uh, later recognized as the text that established the sociology of education as a specific subfield, Durkheim probably believed that the ideas on this course were too provocative to be published. Durkheim started his course by saying that while pedagogy is a Greek word and the school in its current meaning is a Latin, a Roman one, in reality there was no education in the classic world, because for Durkheim, education should be a coherent rule, while Greek and Roman male aristocrats received different and often contradictory teachings by different masters, whose aims was the adornment of the male youth of the ruling class, with skills and notions immediately distinguishing them from non-aristocrats. So Durkheim claimed that the Catholic Church invented education in the Middle Ages as a coherent rule aimed at creating a specific Christian attitude that once acquired will extend to all subjects. And according to Durkheim, the Christian education was also aimed at creating a community. We know community is a big word for Durkheim, where all share the same values, uh, attitudes, and uh, beliefs. Durkheim also denied that the totally different uh, education of uh, Renaissance was a return 
to the Greek and the Roman way. Say we read it everywhere. Durkheim said, but it's not true. But he agreed it was uh, deeply different uh, from the Christian model, because according to Durkheim, uh, Christian model uh, wanted to create a community where people more or less all believe the same, while Renaissance education uh, emphasized individuality, so it also created competition, which did not uh, exist in the medieval schools. Uh, and wanted to emphasize the uniqueness and individuality of each pupil, rather than his, or much more rarely her, being part of a shared community of values and uh, ideas. Durkheim also devoted a famously uh, controversial uh, chapter uh, to the Jesuits, uh, uh, quite critical, saying the Jesuits were extremely important for education because uh, they were very capable of using uh, the best tools of both medieval and Renaissance education, but uh, unfortunately, for the point of view of Durkheim, who was not a fan of the Catholic Church, uh, they used these tools uh, to create obedience to the church rather than uh, independent judgment. The Enlightenment and the French Revolution, Durkheim continued, reacted against the Jesuit models, but uh, they were torn between two contradictory needs. The first was to affirm the Enlightenment idea of individuality, but the second was the need to persuade the citizens of revolutionary and Napoleonic France to obey to the authority and fight in the army as good soldiers, which created an educational crisis that Durkheim said at the beginning of the 20th century, uh, when he, he taught his course has not yet been solved, and he hoped that the new uh, French Republic uh, will solve the crisis by creating a, a new post-Christian model of coherent uh, education inspired not by the religion, but by the Republican values of science, uh, history, and uh, laicity or secularity. However, he was uh, very much doubtful that this was possible. Uh, and uh, he was not sure that a totally secular and non-religious education may achieve the desired result. So we can now understand why Durkheim never published this book, uh, because it would have displeased the Catholics by declaring that their model of education was uh, repressive of the individual pupils, but he was also skeptical enough about uh, the possibility of building an effective uh, education which will be purely secular and uh, ignoring uh, all the references uh, to religion. And French public schools have been struggling with this problem up to these very days because it's forbidden to talk about religion in France. But when you discover if you don't talk about religion, it's tough to understand uh, literature, uh, art, uh, architecture, and uh, history. Personally, I agree that public schools should not uh, indoctrinate or proselyte for any religion, but I'm also persuaded that excluding an objective and neutral look at the role of religions and spirituality in history while designing a school curriculum will make it impossible for students to understand much of the art, culture, literature, and history of humanity in all continents. Even when reflecting on the momentous question of how education can produce good citizens, excluding any consideration of values that have been traditionally based on spirituality can only lead to catastrophic results. 
Dr. Hong Daoz, the Shifu of Taiji Men, offers what I believe is an effective way to include a spiritual reference in the educational projects without violating the principle of separation between church and state and the separation between church and the public school. What uh, Dr. Hong does uh, is to ask to put uh, conscience at the center of education. When he celebrated the, the International Day of Education of 2022, Dr. Hong uh, said uh, that the core value of education lies in inspiring people's uh, conscience uh, and self-awareness. The most important education for everyone, he said, from birth to death, is conscience education. Of course, conscience education is not the only education a coherent educational system should propose. That's not what Dr. Hong says, but he says that conscience education is the most important education because it produces citizens capable of thinking independently. Independently, that is, from any uh, manipulations of politicians and bureaucrats, sometimes perhaps even churches, who try to tell them how they should think, but not independently from responsibility, morality, and uh, conscience. The fact is, however, that corrupt bureaucrats and politicians uh, do not like those who think uh, independently. They do not like conscience education because it produces uh, independently minded uh, citizens. And they do not like those such as Dr. Hong and Taiji men who teach both uh, conscience education and independent thinking. For this reason, Taiji men and Dr. Hong have been slandered, persecuted, uh, and harassed through ill-founded tax bills for more than a quarter of a century. But this is also the very reason why it is so important to, to stand with them and to defend them. They offer a key to the solution of uh, the educational crisis that Durkheim saw but could not uh, himself solve. These keys are precious for all of us, and uh, those who hold them, such as Dr. Hong, should be honored and protected. Thank you. Thank you very much, Massimo. It was very interesting, uh, interesting for everyone, I believe, and also for me as a uh, scholar of new religious movements, but also a pedagogue by training. Uh, so thank you so much again. And uh, now it's time for me to give the floor to Mrs. V Willy Fauce, the director and co-founder of Human Rights Without Frontiers. Please. Thank you. Thank you for uh, giving me the floor for the uh, usual session devoted to the disease, but also as usual, um, we will have a, a video now. Church taxi taxes to people. From 2016 to 2022, the Ministry of Finance has over collected one trillion and one hundred billion New Thailand dollars. Our former head of ministry, Su Jianrong, have over collected more than eight hundred billion from people in his five years in office. It is illegal. Every year he said that he will repay the national debt. He never got any punishment under the law, but we saw that there are still national debt in Taiwan, and the money should be in accordance with the budget. 
And now, after he re retired from the Ministry of Finance, he even went to the school and mislead people's children. Other countries, such as South Korea, Singapore, and the United States, they have given back the over collecting money to people to help people live a better life. Therefore, the Ministry of Finance should also give back the money to people. During inflation, what people need is a government that really cares about people. Many people have hard lives. Some of them even got suicide because of the bonuses, because of the illegal tax bonuses. Many people got tax bills that didn't belong to them. The legislators should review the budget and the country again should watch over if the officials is doing illegal acts. It is people pay your salary, so you should do your duties to protect people. It is not your job, it is your duty. This is the reason why you are in this position. We want the government to really protect our human rights and we want the Ministry of Finance to give back the $48,000 to people. We want justice! We want justice! We want human rights! We want human rights! Well, that was uh, an impressive uh, uh, testimony by that young uh, female uh, activist. And we should not forget that Dizzy play a very important role in the fight for, for justice. But let's now come back to the main topic of uh, uh, this uh, webinar. And first, uh, welcome in this second part of it dealing with the importance of uh, education in the life of any human being anywhere in the world. I have a full teaching career behind me, and I'm very happy that we have this webinar on this topic uh, today. Indeed, education is a human right, a public good, and a political responsibility as well. The United Nations General Assembly proclaimed the 24th of January, International Day of Education, to celebrate the role of education for peace and for development. The right to education is uh, enshrined in uh, Article 26 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which calls for free and compulsory elementary education. The Convention on the Rights of the Child, adopted in 1989, goes further to stipulate, to, goes further to stipulate that countries shall make higher education accessible to all boys and girls. Unfortunately, we see today that in Afghanistan, girls are deprived from this fundamental rights. Education offers children a ladder out of poverty and a path to a promising future. But about 240 million children and teenagers around the world are out of school. 617 million children and adolescents cannot read or do basic mathematics. And less than 40% of girls in Sub-Saharan Africa complete lower secondary school. And some 4 million children and youth refugees are out of school. This right to education is being violated, and this is unacceptable. Without inclusive and equitable quality education and lifelong opportunities for all, countries will not succeed in achieving gender equality, breaking the cycle of poverty, and develop their country harmoniously. So this was my short introduction to this uh, second session. And we will now give the floor to Sherry Chen, a retired teacher.
Hello everyone. I am glad to share with you some of my thoughts on education. I am a retired teacher and I have been engaged in elementary education for 28 years. I have learned that education is an important process to change thinking and destiny. And the fundamental way to change the mindset is to start with conscience education. The United Nations has designated January 24th each year as International Day of Education to promote the idea that there should be no disparity in education and that all people have the right to equal access to education. This day is a reminder and a call to action for all countries to take this goal seriously. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization believes that education is a key element in changing the way people think and act. Richard Charles Levine, former principal of Yale University, once said, if a student has some very professional knowledge and skills after graduating from Yale University, this is the biggest failure of Yale education. The Yale principal believes that education is not just about teaching knowledge, but about developing the ability to think critically and independently and to survive in society. I was fortunate enough to become a Dizzy of Tai Chi Men 30 years ago. This changed my life dramatically. Not only did I learn how to be physically fit and healthy, but I gradually moved away from medication after being sick so often. On the other hand, I have learned many new ways of thinking and wisdom in life from the teachings of my Shifu, Dr. Hong Tao TZ, who taught me by example, word, and wordless teaching, so that I can face life's challenges more positively. Most importantly, Shifu has inspired my conscience, reminding me of the importance of conscience and the need to learn to be good and to abstain from bad behavior. From my mental thoughts to my behavior, I can develop in a good and right direction, and I need to learn to distinguish between good and bad, right and wrong, true and false, so that my thoughts and actions will be less prone to mistakes, which helps me a lot. All of this goes far beyond what a school education can give, and I bring the wisdom I've learned to my work. My Shifu has also inspired me to rethink the meaning of education. Shifu often reminds us dizzies that the purpose of studying is to learn how to behave, and that the core value of education is to inspire people to be good and self-aware. I have incorporated these important core values into my teaching, guiding my students to start with themselves and to behave with filial piety, friendship, and helping others in their lives. There once was a child with Asperger's disorder who was unable to swallow vegetables directly and clean his teeth after meals. Since we need to cut the vegetables smaller, his working mother often has to come to help during lunchtime. I discussed with the other students how we could help him, and one child was so willing to help that, with the consent of both parents, the child who was willing to help brought hygiene gloves and helped with the process. This greatly relieved his mother of the pain of running around and taught the child how to help others. It is more important to know how to lend a helping hand to others than to learn from books. I believe these children will be able to apply the knowledge they have acquired to help the community. My mother was born during the Japanese rule of Taiwan. She wanted to be educated, but due to the poverty of her family and the patriarchal concept of the society at that time, she did not have the opportunity to be educated. This was something she always regretted, so she always encouraged us siblings to take our studies seriously, and we all lived up to her expectations. Finishing university or graduate school, and working in education, culture, and banking. The regret of her life was changed after she entered Tai Chi Men. Tai Chi Men is like a social university, where dizzies come from all walks of life and all ages to practice key, cultivate their minds, and learn from each other. My mother began to learn to dance after she entered Tai Chi Men, and she participated in many of Tai Chi Men's performances at national ceremonies. She even participated in the 1999 Seattle Ocean Festival 50th Anniversary Torque Light Parade with the Tai Chi Men Cultural Group. Shifu's conscience education has inspired each of us to understand the importance of doing more good deeds throughout our lives. 
my mother, in order to promote human rights education and conscience education, also followed the volunteers and went to the school to encourage the children to sign up to support the cause, which not only broadened her horizon, but also gave her the opportunity to give and do good to others. Not only her, but also many brothers and sisters have become richer, happier, and more meaningful in our lives, because we know how to give, how to do good and how to change. The regret that my mother did not go to school to receive an education is no longer a regret. From the Tai Chi Men wrongful and false case that occurred on December 19, 1996, we can see that a few rogue officials violated legal procedures and justice by using the tools at their disposal to persecute people with unequal information through law and taxation, without respecting human rights the rule of law, or the principles of justice and equality, and deeply harming Taiwan's hard-won democracy. When the Tai Chi Men case occurred, my brother was reassigned by his supervisor and demoted to an unimportant department for two years. I also saw many dizzies being bullied and even spurned by their friends and family, and the damage was irreparable. Although the Supreme Court ruled in 2007 that the Tai Chi Men was not guilty and owed no tax, the NTB ignored the verdict of the trials and continued to violate the law by taxing and even illegally auctioning off the sacred land of practice of Tai Chi Men Shifu and disease for national ownership. Determined injustice is not vindicated. This is the worst social education that the government can give to the people telling them that the law cannot protect you and that the judiciary cannot protect social justice or correct the illegal public authorities. At the same time, it also made me feel the importance of conscience education for individuals, society and the country. Therefore, after I retired, I continued to go to schools to promote conscience education from kindergartens to high schools and even enterprises. We hope that through the education of conscience promoted by our Shifu, the seeds of goodness will sprout in everyone's heart. Only when everyone's conscience is awakened can we live in a harmonious and healthy life. If everyone has a conscience, the world will be peaceful. If everyone has happiness, every family will be happy. I will continue to let my conscience guide me to do what is right, what is good, and what is true. Thank you for listening. And I wish you all and your family happy and prosperous. Thank you, dear colleague, uh, Mrs. Sherry Chen. Uh, you, you have been engaged in elementary education for 28 years, as you said, and you are now officially retired teacher. But in fact, you are not retired at all because you continue to go to schools to promote conscience education from kindergartens, as you said, to high schools and even enterprises. And you hope that through the education of conscience, as it is promoted by your Shifu, the seeds of goodness will sprout in everyone's heart and lead to a harmonious and healthy life. Equal access to education for boys and girls, for men and women, is the core message of the UN International Day of Education. And as a girl, you and your generation have benefited from this deep cultural change in Taiwan. As you said that your mother had not been allowed in her youth to go to school because she was living in a patriarchal uh, society. But with Taiji Men and the Shifu's teaching, we, she finally had access to education and she could fulfill her dream that was to learn and to share with other people. Thank you for your testimony. And I will now give the floor to Chu Yi Chan, an engineer. Hello, everyone. Two years ago, I attended the same virtual forum. Now we have witnessed the injustice of the Taiji Men case for 27 years. In light of Taiwan's claims to democracy, the rule of law, and a commitment to human rights, this is rather ironic. 
This is both the nation's and the people's misfortune. In November 2010, I participated tax reform march in front of the president's office for the first time. One of the Taiji men brothers, who was an officer in the Navy, warned me, we both work for the government. We are not allowed to participate in this kind of activities. I suggest you not to join the protest. If you are photographed by the media and published, you may be discharged from the military or lose your lifetime pension. I thanked him for the reminder. I replied, I am trying to protect Taiji men. Our brothers and sisters and Shurfus and our reputation and innocence by not allowing officials to illegally auction our academies. <laughs> if the government finds that I joined the protest, I would rather lose my lifetime pension. Faith is the soul of my heart. It is my vocation as a disciple to protect the master, and no one can easily deprive me of that vocation. Taiji men sued the Administrative Enforcement Agency, Ministry of Justice for illegal auction procedures, but the case was dismissed. So, on January 12, 2023, the Taiji men brothers, sisters, and I went to the High Administrative Court to protest. Although I was very angry at the scene, I told myself that I had to calmly explain the situation to the Taiwanese and international friends through the live broadcast and media. First, the Taiji men case was a fabricated case of human rights persecution. That was fabricated out of nothing. And the Court of Criminal Appeal finally ruled that Taiji men was not guilty of any tax debt or violation of the taxation law. Why could the Administrative Enforcement Agency disregard the decision of the Supreme Administrative Court and auction the Taiji men's sacred lands? To do harm to the innocent people of Taiji men? Second, one of the perpetrators of the Taiji men case. Shi Yusheng, a tax officer of the National Taxation Bureau, accepted a video interview before his death saying that the prosecutor, Ho Quanrun, instigated him to set up and frame the Taiji men together. Since Shi Yusheng admitted his crime, Taiwan's government has no reason not to vindicate the Taiji men case. Instead of arresting the perpetrators and bringing them to justice, the Taiwanese government continues to use public power to persecute the Taiji men and seize its sacred lands. Before the Taiwan's government showed the most basic justice and morality of a country by vindicating the case of the 1979 the Formosa incident and the 1996 Jiang Wuqing injustice case. As the world continues to watch how Taiwan handles cases of human rights persecution, it is also watching to see if the Taiwanese government has done justice and cleared the name of Taiji men. Third, according to Article 9 of the Administrative Enforcement Law, when the Administrative Enforcement Agency has doubts about the enforcement of a case, it should stop enforcing the case. But in an interview with the media in 2020, the deputy director of the enforcement agency, Chen Ingjin, said, when the enforcement agency receives a case referred by a judgment, they cannot fail to enforce it. This government official was blatantly lying, which was also a sign of civil service negligence. The government officials actually deceived the president, the officials, and the people of Taiwan through the media. According to Article 53 of the Enforcement Law, statues, tablets, tombstones and other objects used for worship and rituals shall not be subject to seizure. Article 113 of Article 53 applies to the enforcement of real estate with respect to the enforcement of movable property. The land of the people's spiritual practice is not even allowed to be seized, let alone enforced. Government officials are supposed to administer according to the law and in cases of doubt, civil servants also have the responsibility to clarify the situation according to the law. In order to be law-abiding and live up to the responsibilities entrusted to them by the state. But in the Taiji men case, we see officials taking the lead in undermining the rule of law and using the media to mislead public opinion. How can Taiwan's government still have the face to say that Taiwan is a democratic country with the rule of law and the greatest respect for religious pluralism? On December 20, 2022, a German court convicted 97-year-old Ermgard Furchner of assisting the Nazis in the murder of more than 10,000 people in Stutthof, Poland. As secretary to the camp commander during the youth period between 1943 and 1945, and she must serve a two-year sentence. I'm sorry for what happened, I regret that I was in Stutthof at the time, that's all I can say. Fechner expressed remorse in court. 
Anya Razada, one of the co-plaintiff's representatives, told Faulkner at the court, I don't know if you ever remember the time you spent working in that hell over 70 years ago. But I'm sure you've heard and read the testimonies of the survivors. I believe you have feelings for the testimonies. Speak it out. Many of the plaintiffs are still alive, and they will hear you. The significance of this trial in Germany is the pursuit of historical truth and the pursuit of moral accountability. Likewise, most of the victims of the 1996 Tai Chi Men case who suffered from state violence and political repression are still alive, watching and listening. Tai Chi Men Dizzy were tortured physically and mentally, but we have not given up our pursuit of truth. And our next generation is watching the government's words and deeds. Does the Taiwan's government not pursue historical truth and moral education? If the government really wants to establish itself as a model of a democratic country with the rule of law and to implement the justice of transformation, it should start with the vindication of the Tai Chi Men case, which is the first step of performing transitional justice in Taiwan. The next step is to hold the perpetrators accountable and put them on trial so that Taiwanese people can have their basic faith, human rights and innocence. Thank you all. Yeah, and thank you, uh, Xu Ying Chang, uh, <clears throat> for your testimony. Uh, the, the teachings of, of your Shifu, as I could see, have deeply influenced uh, your, your conscience, your own conscience. But when you chose to participate in a tax reform march 12 years ago, you knew you could be, you could put your present and future life uh, in danger because you were working for the government and you were not allowed to demonstrate against a governmental institution. But you did. You did it because your Shifu had always taught you to prioritize the voice of your conscience, which was not the case of that uh, German lady's story that uh, you mentioned in your testimony. And I thank you uh, for sharing your thoughts uh, with us. Now I will give the floor to Judith Xu, Channel Director, International Software Company. Hello everyone, I'm Judith and I'm current the channel based director for a multinational survey company. And it's, it is an honor to be here today for the International Day of Education Forum. And I would like to pay tribute to old educators. Education has changed my life, especially um, I want to thank my primary school enlightenment mentor, Zhang Man Zhang. In the 1970s, he was a young teacher full of association for education in the ruined primary school with limited resources. He tried everything to help me to get a school in the city, which opened my eyes and allowed me to see things from a different perspective. This motivated me to continue on and I graduate with honors all the way to the university, and then I have today's accomplishments. This is a story of an educator who conscious, with conscience who plants the seed in my heart. And when I became a Tai Chi Man Deeds 20 years later, my Shifu, Dr. Hong Daozi, continued to water and to nourish the seed of the conscience in order to, in order for it to grow stronger. This, I believe, is the best example for the years of for this year's International Day of Education theme. Invest in people and prioritize education. And the right to education is a fundamental human right for which the state in the res are responsible. Religions, race, gender, language, age, ability, um, region, finance, financial resources, and uh, social status, uh, even political position, and so on, should not have the impact to, on the education. Everyone has the equal opportunity to obtain the education 
and the same time, education takes place not only in school, but also in the home, the workplace, nature, the streets, daily life, and the social environment. The United Nations Secretary General uh, Antonio Guterres also once said, when education is interrupted, it affects everyone, especially for students and teachers and the families. We have seen the danger change in world situation in recent years, particularly in last year, 2022. The Ukrainian, Ukrainian uh, Russian war, and followed by the uh, assassination of Japanese Prime, Prime Minister Abe and the death of the Queen of England and the racing epidemic inflation and uh, various diseases all continue to the to threat human life in addition to a severe test of climbing anomalies and the natural diseases. In order to survive, humans must adjust their consciousness and uh, actions. Under the primes of the demand, it is necessary to promote the culture of the conscience and to implement the education for all. The conscience for everyone, every world citizen can promote a safer, healthier, and a peaceful living environment for world citizens. And only then can all citizens be further united and work together to achieve global sustainable development. And my shifu, Dr. Hong Daos, once said, an excellent culture is an is the fundamental fund, and excuse me, an excellent culture is the foundation of the quality education, which is the essential for uh, sustainable in economic development. The meaning of the education is the Trans transmission of high quality culture, as well as the development of the moral and the conscious education. So conscious is human nature's kindness. We can change the country, society, and the world by promoting good and combining evil via the education and self-awareness. This is the best example of education for all. And, edu and education puts the first priority on the morality, which must be practiced and implemented in addition to the knowledge or professional skills learned in books. And my shifu, Dr. Hong Dao, Zhang Menren of Taiji Men, is both an educator and also the practitioner. He has led the Taiji Men Goodwill Cultural Group to the five continents in 101 countries, allowing world leaders and the influenced people to ring the bell of world peace and love and prom promise to benefit the world with their conscious wishes. A res responsible government is, is especially important for people's happiness we hope to awaken the world's conscience by promoting the conscience movement because conscience is the source of love and, and peace. When we act with conscience and care about everything, we can gather positive energy. However, Dr. Hong and the Tai Chi men who are dedicated to global security, or illegally issued massive fake tax bills by some tax officials in Taiwan who were greedy for bonuses. What's more, after 10 years and three months of the protracted lit litigations, the, Sp the uh, Spawn Corp issued the third instance ruling determining that Tai Jima was not guilty and on no taxes. The Re 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 relevant National Tax Bureau, Taxation Bureau, NTB, press personnel act 
actually lost their conscience and uh, continue to issue back tax bills illegally. Then even co collaborated with the administrative enforcement agency in August 2020 to illegally auction of Thai Jimin's holy land for self cultivation, which was a um, uh, and valid not only human rights, but also people's freedom of religions, belief, and the cultural life rights. As a result, the UN NGO with the sense of justice and the concern for human rights has submitted the case of human rights prosecution that has been delayed for 27 years to the UN six times. That is, it has received worldwide attention. Because of the tax system, which is related to the people's livelihood, it is easy way for nation public power to violate human rights. It must be controlled through strict supervisions and the after the facts corrective measure by the judicious and the legislative system. The key to the soundness of the system lies in whether the, lay, the law enforce, enforces arbitration according to their conscience and makes various decisions with the people at the center. Experts and uh, scholars from various countries also spoke out uh, in support of Thai Jimin at the numerous forums, press conferences, and uh, magazine website reports, and uh, condemning how the Taiwan government used law and taxes to harm Thai Jimin and even confiscated um, the holy land of Thai Jimin. As a result, we urge Taiwan government, Taiwan's government to grant Tai Jimin Shifu and the deeds their due rights and, uh, and to return their holy land for self-cultivation confiscated illegally by the government so that Tai Jimin Shifu and deeds can fully contribute to world peace and the culture continuously at the same time. I hope that public power will no longer prosecute people. The government should actively reform the bad system and promote people's well-being. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yudith. Education is indeed extremely important for the personal future of young people and for society. All teachers at school play a major role in the shaping of the minds of their students, the next generation who will lead the country. A young, passionate primary school teacher changed your life. Several teachers also played a major role in my life. And I'm sure that many people following this webinar can say the same thing. But school education is not the end of it. Uh, in your case, Dr. Hong uh, Tao Tse was your next major educator. He shared all his wisdom with you as the other disease. An excellent culture is the foundation of a quality education, which is essential for sustainable economic development, Yoshifu said. And he also stated, and I quote, the meaning of education is the transmission of high quality culture, as well as the development of moral and conscience education. Conscience is human nature's kindness. We can change the country, society, and the world by promoting good and combating evil via education and self-awareness. These were the teachings of your Shifu. And these are all good lessons for all diseases to keep in their minds and in their hearts. And now I would give the floor to Craig Shi, 
a field service engineer. Thank you. Hi, it's given me great pleasure to share my thoughts with international friends at today's International Days of Education Forum. Education is the, is the impetus that can transform a person's future and the world. Through education and learning, we can pass, pass on knowledge from generation to generation, and we can create a better future for mankind by the accumulation, exploration, and the application of knowledge and the cultural experience. Also, we cultivate wisdom in the process of education and learning. Education should be the best human right enjoyed by all. But according to UN statistic, nearly 240 million children and adolescents are not in school or have dropped out. Every child has the potential to be the master of the world's global village, creating limitless opportunities in the future. If we miss out the golden age of education, we risk killing the seed that has the potential to take root and make the world a better place. Similarly, if good education and edu education that enlightened conscious are not given during the golden age of education, it is equivalent to preventing the seed that made the world better from growing into a big tree that can show the people. School education or institu institutionalized education is defined as education in a narrow sense, whereas education in a broad sense includes aspects of how society treats people and things, such as family education, etiquette, religious beliefs, and other cultural and social education. In other words, as long as individuals live in human society from birth to death, they have been subtly influenced by the education of the entire society, or their own words and deeds will have enough power to educate others. Individual thoughts and behaviors become the social ethos of the entire country, which is the feedback to everyone, forming a positive feedback cycle good will be better. This is invisible power and importance of social education. In Taiwan, I was educated in traditional Chinese culture, learning the philosophy of dealing with people as well as ancestors' wisdom and self-cultivation in the four books and five classics, which shaped our personality traits of warmth, kindness, respect, thrift, and accommodation. Xunzi advocated in Confucianism that human nature is inherently evil, so people must improve themselves through the influence of the external environment and self-learning. Whether it is the theory that human nature is evil or that human nature is good, how many people can control their hearts and not be influenced or blinded by the evil thoughts of human nature. That is greed, hatred, ignorance, arrogance, and adopt. If we are not guided by good forces, there are too many temptation and obscene sounds in today's fast changing and technologically advanced society. Only through good education can we examine ourselves and get rid of the five poison of hearts in order to become a better version of ourselves and then can help others and the society. At the age of 10, I began practicing Qigong at Tai Chi Man. Qigong not only keeps me healthy, but it also teaches me to be good and avoid bad things, to be a good example of a good person and to practice love and peace through my action, through artistic performances of Qigong and martial arts. The Tai Chi Man Love and Peace Goodwill Culture Group has conveyed the highest state of martial arts to stop fighting and to make peace over the years. Internationally, the instructive performances have always been recognized. In light of the fact that the world is, is in an atmosphere of environmental climate change and international turmoil, 
and that everyone is in danger. The Zhang Menren doctor Hong Daozi advocates that people rely on conscience. In 2014, he promoted the era conscious movement. The Shifu and the Daozi tra traveled around the world to promote conscious culture and implement conscious education through the culture exchange forums and other means. And the race and lay summon summoned influential leaders from all over the world and collaborate in the promotion of conscious culture, hoping everyone's conscious will be awakened and constructing an arc of conscious for all mankind together to keep humans safe from the torrent of destruction. Taiwan's society has been in disarray for the past 30 years. There is an urgent need for conscientious and genuine reform in the judiciary, tax law, and administration. The fictitious case of Tai Chi Man can provide us with a clip of the big picture. For the sake of power and fame, the illegal Taiwan government officials obliterate their own consciences and reverse the right and wrong in the 1219 Tai Chi Man back case. It has been 27 years since the Tai Chi Man back case occurred, and there have been far too many up corruptions in the public sector. It is considered to be one of the worst social education examples in the world. Government officials are all educated, receiving formal education, and have been promoted through the international examination system. Do they not understand various law and regulations? How do they break law after law and deceive the public? Is it possible to trample on the humanistic qualities and the moral cultivation learned in previous education in pursuit of fame and fortune? And can all truth and falsehood, right and wrong, be abandoned? The people are the most important element in the, in the nation. The, the spirits and of the land and the grand are next. The suffering is the lightest, mention said. Despite the monarch's dictatorship in ancient China, there was a concept of putting the people first. A country's foundation is made up of its people. Only when the people are happy and peaceful can monarch win their hearts and the country enjoy long-term stability. Otherwise, this will only lead to deterioration. This is, on, this is also the conscience of those on the throne advocated by the saints and the sages throughout human history. My child is about turn one years old and I was promoted to novice father last year. I watch my son constantly learn by imitating the behavior of the dogs while raising a child. And I know the truth that people follow the example of their superiors. If the government has taken the lead in breaking the law and oppressing the people behind the scenes, there is no guarantee that this trend will not spread throughout society. How could the country not be in, a di in disarray? I believe that integration of knowledge and action is the key to succeed, successful education. If you know it's wrong, don't do it. As a result, before fully utilizing their knowledge and expertise, people in position of authority and the leadership should first examine their own conscience in order to set a good example of social education for the country. That's all on my sharing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Craig Shi. Uh, According to UN statistics, uh, you said nearly uh, 240 million children and adolescents are not in school or have dropped out. This is a human tragedy for each of these kids, but it's also uh, a huge loss of potential for their countries. You also stress that education should not be understood in the narrow sense of only school uh, education. Everyone 
is subtly influenced by the education of the entire society. And everybody has enough power in words and in deeds to educate others. And that's what Dr. Hong is teaching the disease. Be educators of others and of the whole Taiwanese uh, society. And now I will present the last uh, speaker, the last disease, Hang Som Lu, student teacher. The floor is yours. Hello. I'm glad to be here. Is that this is my first time uh, to the forum in English. Yeah. Okay. Hello, my name is Han Wei, and I am delighted to share my story and my opinion with you today. Hai Jimen is where I grew up. When I began practicing Qigong, my long-standing allergies began to improve. And I know how to think positively in order to get through the difficult times. Growing up in Tai Jimen has provided me with a wealth of fantastic and unforgettable memories. Tai Jimen was invited to perform at a nation, national day 10 times between 1998 and 2010. And we did so eight times. I have always listened to my brothers and sister share the experience with the performance since I was a small child. And I'm eager to participate as well. In 2010, I finally had a chance to perform with my brother and sister in front of uh, Kaida Gelan Boulevard and the uh, Presidential Palace to commemorate the country's birthday. Because I live in Pingdong, a Taiwanese southernmost county, I had to take the bus up north every weekend at around 3 a.m. before down to practice. It was exhausting to sleep and wake up on a bus, but it's very meaningful to be able to commemorate our country's birthday and create lasting memories. But 2010 was also a confusing year for me because in December, we learned that our academy were about to be enforced and auctioned off illegally due to unpaid taxes. To convey our demand in a calm and rational manner, we have to go to Kaidagalan Boulevard and join the Tax Reform Save Taiwan. Everyone stand out a campaign. We've been aware of the 1219 case since we are very, very young. Our parents, brothers, and sisters assured us that justice has already been served and that we are free to go. However, the Taxation Bureau ignored the Supreme Court decision that we are not guilty and owe no taxes. The Taxes Bureau did not cancel the erroneous tax bill. So with a heart full of helplessness, confusion, and conflict, I set up for the first time at um, Kaida Gelan Boulevard. Despite the fact that we won the administrative remedy 18 times, the National Taxation Bureau did not cancel the illegal tax bill until I was a university student in Taipei. In 2020, I visited an admin, uh, administrative enforcement agency, the Ministry of Finance and the Kaida Gelan Boulevard initi uh, initiative several times. But the administrative enforcement agency and the National Taxation Bureau continue to illegally auction off our predetermined uh, pre cultivation location. I was upset and frustrated at the time. And I was dissatisfied with the deposal and administrative remedy system implemented by the Ministry of Finance and the executive authorities. Why is it illegal to tax someone based on the fabricated indictment? Why is it possible to impose a fictitious tax bill? 
What enrages me is why such a good man Pai is being persecuted in this manner. Shifu's wisdom and the love and care of my brothers and sisters provides me the foundation and nourishment that shaped me as a group up in Taiji Men. Shifu has also led his deed to uh, on five continents, preaching love and peace and promoting global science. I also traveled to India with Shifu in 2018 to participate in the 18th International Conference of Chief Justice of World to, uh, to spread a message for love. Wasn't that is the good man, uh, was, wasn't that the best diplomacy? Please forgive me for asking again, but what is such a good man pie being persecuted in this manner? And is there even more tragic, that is unjust case of public persecution, which has lasted for more than quarter century, occurred in Taiwan? which is known as the Asia beacon of democracy. And that the government's action are without a doubt the worst education for all on the rule of law and human rights. The following years, I was having dinner with my Hong Kong and Malaysia roommates. And, there, uh, and we are working down Kaida Gelan Boulevard in the evening. Uh, they take the photo with their phones. I also snap a photo with my phone and share it on, on my social media. And they inquired, are you unfamiliar with this location? I reply, I, I reply them with the helpless smile. Actually, it's too familiar. To them, Kaida Gelan Boulevard repents Taiwanese democracy and freedom. But to me, it's a place with that evokes conflict conflicting emotion. One time when I was on my way to Kaida Gelan Boulevard, only about 10 minutes walk away, unintentionally in the world, it's so close, can out, my, can out of my mouth. Many mem memories uh, of traveling north at midnight flashed through my mind, and I realized how quickly time had, had passed. A 10-year-old um, elementary school student has progressed to university student and is now an elementary, uh, elementary school teacher. But a Taiji Men case is still ongoing and has not been uh, resolved. Today's forum is themed after the UN International Day of Education. Now, as a practice teacher, I always tell my students three things. First, to be safe and healthy. Uh, second, to learn how to deal with your emotion. And finally, and most importantly, to not be afraid of failures and mistakes. We must conform, uh, we must confront and correct them. As educator, uh, as educator Robert for Rubel uh, stated, education is nothing but a concern for love and role model. I hope that the tax authorities will admit uh, and correct their mistake so that they can set an example for social education that hold human rights and the rule of law. I, the elementary school student, have made sure. I hope that we, this generation and the government and the administration can serve as a good example to the next generation. I hope so. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Hang Lu. Uh, growing up in uh, Taiji Men, you said, you were able to improve your allergies uh, dating back to your childhood. And you were also able to grow up thinking positively through times of uh, depression. Also, since you were young, you have always listened 
to your brothers and sisters who are sharing their experience with you. This is part of the global concept of education and learning process that you have integrated from the teachings of uh, Dr. Hong. And thank you for Dr. Hong for influencing so many people of all ages with uh, his uh, philosophy. You were the last speaker among the, the disease, and I will give the floor back uh, to Carolina, who will introduce uh, another speaker. Thank you very much to all of you for your contribution. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, so uh, now after this second part, I would like to give floor to Dr. Uh, to Mr. Marco Respinti, who is director in charge of Bitter Winter magazine, and who will summarize the meeting, please. Thank you. I hope my video, I mean, my camera goes well. And it has a, it had a bizarre behavior before. So just let me know if you something happens. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, also, as a former teacher, even if briefly, it is my pleasure to draw some conclusion for our today's webinar held in the wake of the International Day of Education. The United Nations celebrate this day of observance on February the 24th, since the year 2019. Education is, in fact, a key factor for the full devel development development of a person, thus a requirement for a mature life and a truly democratic society. The scholars who presented their papers today and the these are disciples of the Taijiman movement who brought us their testimonies, underline it from different angles in a choral symphony who went right to the core of the question. In her opening remarks, Dr. Carolina Maria Hess, researcher in esotericism and new religious movements at the Center for Comparative Studies of Civilization of the Jagiellonian University in Poland, brilliantly reminded us what Taijiman case is all about, saying, among other things, I quote, one positive effect of this movement is that numerous researchers and activists for human rights from around the world are now aware of the Taijiman and its teaching about peace, love, and conscience. It is not an exaggeration to say that a true community has been created with a new awareness of the relationship between conscience, justice, and peace, and even new friendships. And of course, then Dr. Michele Olzi, a fellow Italian countryman, took the floor. Dr. Olzi is a teaching assistant uh, to the course of religion and media, as well as a temporary research fellow in political theory at the University of Insubria in Italy. He finally spoke of the use and force of symbols, noting that, quote, collective imaginaries can never be taken for granted they are damaged and impoverished by injustice, as it happened in Taiwan with the Taijiman case. End of quote. He then commented on the Bell of World Peace and Love, design, designed by Dr. Hong Tao Tse, chief or grandmaster of Taijiman, describing it as, quote, an artifact that consents the so socio symbolical impoverishment of political and spiritual forces in contemporary collective imaginaries, end of quote. Underlining the Bell's value, Dr. Olsi called it, quote, the hope that tells us today that this damaged imaginary where the Taijiman movement is persecuted may be rectified, end of quote. It's a very good, strong message of hope that I really, uh, hope we will uh, follow. After him, Professor Massimo Introvigna, founder of the Center for the Study of New Religion, Chesner, and editor-in-chief of, chief of Bitter Winter Magazine, of which I, am the, I have the honor to serve as a director in charge, focused on education as viewed by sociology. 
the Torah message of his speech has a particular value. He said, quote, I believe that public schools should not indoctrinate or proselytize for any religion, but I am also persuaded that excluding any objective look at the role of religions and spirituality while designing a school curriculum would make it impossible for students to understand much of the art, culture, literature, and history of humanity in all continents. Even when reflecting on the momentous question of how education can produce good citizens, excluding any consideration of values based on spirituality can only lead to catastrophic result, end of quote. This is something to constantly meditate upon, and I very much like to tie it to uh, the following session, uh, second part of our webinar with the, with the testimonies of, the, of, the, of Dizzy, uh, who were aptly introduced by Mr. Billy Fautre, director and co-founder of Human Rights Without Frontiers, HRWF in Brussels, Belgium. Among other things, Mr. Fautre importantly said, and I quote, again, the right to education is enshrined in Article 26 of the Universal De Declaration of Human Rights, which calls for free and compulsory elementary education. The Convention on the Rights of the Child adopted in 1989 goes further to stipulate that countries shall make higher education accessible to all, boys and girls. At this point, let me thank both Chesner and HRWF for organizing this important series of webinars dedicated to the Tajman case. As I anticipated, these they contributed much to today's webinars. Sherry Chen, a retired teacher, said that, quote, the worst social education that the government can give to the people is to tell them that the law cannot protect you and that the judiciary cannot protect social justice or correct the illegal public authorities, end of quote. And this is exactly what happened in the Thaijiman case. Yi Yan Chu, an engineer, significantly added that, quote, government officials are supposed to administer according to the law. And, in, ca and in, in case of doubt, civil servants also have the responsibility to clarify the situation according to the law in order to be law abiding and live up to the responsibilities entrusted to them by the state. But in the Tajiman case, we see officials taking the lead in undermining the rule of law and using the media to mislead public opinion. How can Taiwan's government still have the face to say that Taiwan, he said, is a democratic country with the rule of law and the greatest, greatest respect for religious pluralism? And of quote, and a very important question to be answered very soon. In her turn, Judith Chu, channel director at an international software company, commented, quote, the right to education is a fundamental human right for which the state is responsible. Religion, race, gender, language, age, ability, region, financial resources, social status, political position, and so on should not have an impact on education. Everyone has an equal opportunity to obtain a, an education. At the same time, education takes place, not only in schools, this is very important, this is my comment, but also in the home, the workplace, natural, the street, even, daily life, and the social environment, end of quote. Then Craig Chi, a field service engineer, observed, quote, every child has the potential to be the master of the world's global village, creating limitless opportunities in the future. If we miss out on the golden age of education, we, re we risk killing the seed that has the potential to take root and make the world a better place. Similarly, if good education and education that enlighten conscience are not given during the golden age of education, it is equivalent to preventing the seeds that make the world better from growing into a big tree that can shelter people." End of quote. And last but not the least, Hank Lu, a student teacher, has said important things, and I just picked up one quote, one single sentence from his testimony because it's 
the core question. I hope you say that we and the government of the administration can be a good role model for the next generation. It is as simple as that, and it tells all. Now, the papers presented today by the scholars and the, and the testimonies given by Tajiman Dizi at our webinar remind me, remind me of the ancient Greek concept of paideia, closely studied in modern times by German American classicist Bernard Jäger. Normally, paideia is translated with education, but it is much more than that. It is the inner, intimate meaning of education itself. For sure, ancient Greeks and ancient schools of Greek thought debated much on its true meaning, but this grand philosophical discussion achieved its goal by furnishing, at the end, a very strong and deep formulation of that concept itself, Paideia. Before daring to express it, let me remind a common mistake that almost all today do, be they scholars, politicians, media professionals, average people, and unfortunately, even educators. The error is to confuse instruction with education. In fact, the first is the idea of passing valuable notions, information, and even skills from a teacher onto a disciple or student. While the second regards the formation of a person. Probably in ancient Greece, Paideia started as instruction, but ended as education. Briefly, it came to represent an ideal, the perfection to which human beings should tend. One thing should be noted. Education is not the idea of adding to a person something that he or she doesn't possess. It is not writing a new on an empty blackboard. It is regaining the consciousness of something that was lost by reminding it. Even better, it is finding what is worth deeply buried within oneself and bring it to the surface. The term education comes, in fact, from the Latin language and means to draw out. A teacher helps a student to draw out of himself or herself what it really matters for his or her human fulfillment. Now, education as reminding and drawing out parallel, parallels philosophy, which in Plato's term is to remind what is worth after our obscured memory lost it. Greek philosopher Socrates, master, teacher, and inspirers, inspirer of Plato, as well as, as his persona, Musk, through so many seminal dialogues, considered philosophy chiefly as education to truth and called it maieutics, which means midwifery or the art to help a mother to deliver her child. In fact, for Socrates, philosophy, for Socrates, philosophy equals education and means that a student give birth to an otherwise forgotten truth with the help of a teacher of the obstetrician. No wonder that this philosophy valued the way of the dialogue most. In fact, dialogue means a direct relationship between two persons, teacher and disciple. As I said, paideia is an ideal to be reached, and that ideal is the fullness of the human person. Roman rhetoric phrased that ideal as vir bonus vicendi peritus, of the good man, the good human being, able to speak. It is less intellectualistic a notion that we might think. It means that education is to learn to cultivate the good in itself for the sake of one's soul, and that the ability to speak is the power to argue or to defend truth in a world of evil and sin. Paideia is in sum an ideal of civilization independent from how many material things one knows or is able to do. The civilization of the educated is in fact not the society of many Einstein who know everything, is the community, to go back to a, a strong uh, word for Durkheim, uh, for example, mentioned before, 
the community of free people whose freedom is to regain, regain one's lost self. Paideia is then another name for the goal toward which Dr. Hong leads Taiji men for the improvement of the world, not only for the sake of the world, not, not, not only for the sake of Taiji men itself, but for the sake of the whole world. Let me just mention uh, the Guru Nanak Dev University in Amritsar, India, which I just visited before Christmas, where every single student has to take a course in human rights as part of the mandatory curriculum to understand fully what a person is and what uh, kind of defense the human being uh, deserves. In fact, human rights activists should then be educated to the ideal of civilization that the Greek concept of paideia conveys if they want to be seriously effective. They will then, doing so, properly understand Taijiman and the Taijiman case. In fact, they may even fail to attain material freedom for the people they advocate for, but they will always win in helping them to be truly free. And this is not a sad consolation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for taking part in today's webinar. And now we'll introduce the closing video. So happy new year. Happy new year. Happy, uh, happy new year. This year is uh, a year. year of revenue. Hello, everyone.